Hey everyone, we're at Gigabyte's OC Lab now in Taiwan, and this is High Cookie's lab. So if you don't know who High Cookie is, he's, I think it's fair to say, the, the main or only overclocker at, uh, at Gigabyte doing extreme overclocking. Uh, high Cookie has uh, placed several high scores, is a, a very skilled overclocker. And this is his lab, so we get to show off some cool stuff like custom LN2 pots. Uh, we have delitted 3175X CPUs here as well, and then also um, the infamous chiller. So today we're going to walk through the lab, show off some of the really cool stuff here at Gigabyte OC Lab, talk about some of the, the more interesting overclocks and tests going on, and hopefully get into some numbers for both AMD and Intel systems on the higher frequency, uh, uh, higher frequency overclocks that High Cookie has pulled off. Before that, this video is brought to you by iFixit and the Manta Driver Kit. The iFixit Manta Driver Kit is built out as a generalized tool for repairs of all types, with a focus on game console repairs by including those strange proprietary bits, phone repair bits, laptop repair bits, and more. The Manta Driver Kit includes Triwing bits, spanners, pause drive, game bits, torque security bits, and everything else for general tech repair. Click the link below to learn more. So let's start with the chiller. The chiller is a uh, high Lee chiller. And so quick correction here. I think our understanding from, from one of our sources earlier at Computex last year was that Intel was running at something like minus 20 uh, degrees Celsius for its chiller with a 3175X. But I think this actually does seven. So uh, seven degrees Celsius for the chiller. This is the one that um, it, it's about a thousand watt uh, maximum power the chiller and uh, all this tubing right here is the heavily insulated tubing to run it. So you just run it through a, a water loop chillet, kind of like what we do for our overclock streams, except way better because we use ice. So this is far more efficient. And this hooked up to the 3175X, which ran at five gigahertz. And I, I think most of you know the story of that one. And then over here is a one of the Gigabyte X599 motherboards. And we'll have more information on this too. Buildzoid is working on a PCB analysis for us. That should be really interesting. So if you want to see his analysis of the board, similar to the, the uh, we did one for the Dominus, then make sure you subscribe and check back for that. But this is one of the, the uh, X599 boards that Gigabyte's working on. It has a, um, a I guess, development heatsink on it. So this is not the final heatsink. We can show a shot of the final heatsink, the final uh, mass production board as well. But this is high cookie setup on the VRM with uh, four, fans that I think are just running because it's easier for um, for debugging purposes when doing the higher overclocks on the CPU. And I guess let's show off uh, let's show off this delitted one too. So this is and you may have seen this when Roman did a delid, but this is a 3175X delitted. And uh, this one is is special because if we flip it over on the back side we have a scorch mark. <laughs> so I think, uh, Hi Cookie, was it just that this was running too high, too much power? Yes. So it's just running too much power. Um, do we know like what kind of wattage? Uh, uh, above 1800 watts. Above 1800? Yeah. Okay, so above 1800 watts, uh, there's the, the result of that. <laughs> so just too much power. Um, obviously you don't need to worry about this at home for stock use, but I, I'm positive you have this under liquid nitrogen, right? Just uh, liquid nitrogen. And uh, there's the delitted CPU, so you can see the, the die, and you've probably seen this before at this point, but um, one thing we were asking about is, we've discussed in the past about how Intel, with these X299, X599 CPUs, went with a dual substrate, and I never quite understood why, and uh, my understanding is it's just so that the primary substrate here with a die is more easily accommodated to the square ILM or the narrow ILM. And uh, so it's actually, it just makes it more modular. So Intel can uh, more easily pull the, the, the important part, which is the die and its substrate off and put onto different packages for use in server or uh, enthusiast desktop use cases, stuff like that. So uh, so that's a delated 3175X with, with some scorch marks. You won't see many of those. I think, hi Cookie, this, this does not happen too frequently, right? It's, it's not too common. So not, not too common that you get the scorch marks, but um, this is pretty cool as well. So this is a custom uh, LN2 pot that was made for the X599 overclocking. And if you don't know, when Intel did their five gigahertz demo on stage at Computex, they were using the Gigabyte board 
So um, we did our review with the Asus board. Asus and Gigabyte are the only two motherboards for X599 right now. And uh, like I said, we have some, some more information on the Gigabyte board that'll come out shortly on the channel because we just got to see the mass production model or close to it anyway. So Gigabyte was the one that was used for overclocking and I think uh, also was the only board that was able to do five gigahertz at the time. Asus wasn't ready yet. So this is the Allen 2 pot that if you wanted to do Allen 2 uh, high cookie made to fit on the mounting for X599 because as you've probably seen in our review, 599 is a, um, a slightly different socket than normally. It doesn't have the, IL the, uh, the loading mechanism. So there's no ILM on it and that makes it difficult to get mounting pressure and, and to adapt different LN2 pots on the market to it. You have to make something custom. So anyway, uh, sort of similar to like the T-Rex or something like that in that it's a, a bit smaller, but it's very high density, high mass. And then also over here is uh, one of the EK velocities. We used an EK, I, th I think it was the velocity, I'm not sure, but we used an EK uh, water block like this for our chilled 3175X overclocking. And um, this one's been used for overclocking recently. So I think the, the relevant information that I have over here, this board has a label on it, 4.6 gigahertz for uh, one over, for Prime 95. Okay, is that um, uh, AVX? Uh, no, no, not not AVX. Yeah. So 4.6 gigahertz, was that with this water block? Yes. Okay, so 4.6 G with this water block. Uh, for Prime 95, non-AVX, uh, 33X for the mesh or for Encore, and then uh, 4200 megahertz, 4266 yeah. for the frequency, C CL18 on that. And that was doing 800 watts for that, which is pretty high, but not quite as high as the 1800 watt burnout version of the 3175X. Uh, other, you've written some, high cookies written some other overclocks over here. So 4333 megahertz for uh, one of the higher memory overclocks. That was with a BCLK of 98.6, 4266 with BCLK of 101.6. And uh, I think you, uh, it's difficult to get above 102 BCLK. Yes, currently. So there is a, uh, a, the screenshot that was behind me over here, we can show as well, um, was 4.4 for the memory. It's 4,400 megahertz on that. And I guess we'll just show that off quickly too. So if you look here at DRAM frequency, 2200. Uh, you're just multiplying by, by two there, but so 4,400 4, megahertz hexachannel. And this is the, I guess the, the screenshot of high cookies, highest memory overclock on this platform. Okay. So highest memory overclock on this platform. Uh, AMD overclocking is also interesting to talk about. So a lot of you, since we did the, the stream with Joe Staponzi, uh, a lot of you asked if we could do some kind of LNT overclocking with AMD. I'm working with Joe on doing more of that, so stay tuned for that. But High Cookie, of course, working at Gigabyte, has already done plenty of overclocking with AMD because they make platforms for both Intel and AMD products. So Threadripper, I think under liquid nitrogen, what was your highest? Uh, 5.4. 5.4? Yeah. That's with 32 core yes. 2990WX. And uh, what kind of voltage for that? Uh, 1.5. 1.5 volts, 5.4 yeah. gigahertz. And over 1700 watts. Okay, over 1,700 watts. Yeah. Okay. But the consider 1,600 watts still can handle it. Yeah, yeah. So using a Corsair AX1600i pulling over 1,700 watts. And uh, um, I guess I, I can note here too that we've done some load testing on the Corsair power supplies in the past. Like I think the HX850, and we took it up to like, uh, like 950 watts, and it, it was fine. So no OCP. Um, so on the, for AMD, overclocking with a 32 core 2990WX at a 5.4 gigahertz. Uh, what, um, what, what was your biggest challenge at that point? Was it just thermal? Like, did you have, do you, is there a cold bug with AMD or no? No. No cold no bug? bug yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you just run full pot? Yeah, not full pot. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. The, the typical is, the GPU is only can run pizza express by one mm. and gen one. Okay, yeah. okay, so. so Full pot for it, uh, PCI Express Gen 1. Yeah, by one. By one. Yeah. Uh, is that just for stability? Yeah. Okay. And for the CB. Mm. For, for the Cinebench? Yeah. What, do you know what Cinebench score you got? Uh, I think it's 8400. 8400? 8, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's very high. 
<laughs> uh, so for that AMD Overclock X399 Gaming 7 for the motherboard on that Gigabyte motherboard, of course. So um, I th think that's probably most of the cool stuff in the lab. There's all kinds of test equipment, of course. Uh, I mean, like, for example, just random digital multimeters lying around, like this Fluke 28.2 or 28 I, I guess. But uh, on top of your highly chiller, and then you have, uh, I think, some other equipment over here. Like, is this SunTech just a, a digital a laser thermometer? So just laser thermometer. And lots of cool equipment. There's insulation all over the place. There are LN2 uh, containers in the corner. There's a doer also over there. So all the equipment you need for liquid nitrogen overclocking. Uh, and then of course, doing some, uh, some research on water cooling overclocking, on chilled water overclocking. Really interesting stuff as a lab. Uh, Hi Cookie, is there anything that I've overlooked here? Maybe you want to see the, this is Nactua. Mm. You, you, you ever tried this one before? Yeah. Yeah. Is it the Threadripper or is it no, the... It's, it's oh, I haven't, no. I have not tried yeah. this one. Actually, it's very, very good. Mm. The, uh, like AMD is the that people where we use Chill, right? Yeah. And they pop up their Threadripper can do air, air cooling. Mm. So on the 28 core, you also can run air cooling. And the 24-7 stable will be like a 4.2. Okay. And at some point, CPU will be doing 4.1. 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 1. mm. But 4.1, 4.2 is still very impressive just for the air That's cooling. pretty good for air yeah. cooling. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Yeah. So is this uh, on market yet? It's on, um, I think it's not yet. Not Coming yet. soon. Okay. Yeah. So knock to an air cooler. Uh, and you can see the cold plate is sized appropriately for the 3175X. And we've shown these... Um, these for AMD's Threadripper CPUs in the past as well, and they work very well, actually. The, the cold plate size matters a lot. So there's Noctua's air cooler. You said 4.2 gigahertz yeah. on this. Yeah. Do you know what voltage? 1.02. 1.02? Yeah. Pretty good. So Noctua A15, 1500 RPM fan. So that's, that's the, uh, I guess, future product for the 3175X. Uh, so that's Gigabyte's OC Lab. Thank you for watching. As always, you can subscribe for more. And of course, we appreciate Hi Cookie and Gigabyte for allowing us to film this. Uh, if you want to see more of this content, make sure you check the channel because we'll be in Taiwan and in uh, China for the next two weeks. So lots of factory tours coming up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.